Okay, so now we're on to our next presenter, who is Deputy Chief Brian Godlinton uh, from Langley City Fire Rescue Service. Uh, Deputy Chief Godlinton has served with Langley City Fire Rescue and also Vancouver Fire and Rescue. Over the past 28 years, he served in the roles of Assistant Chief Emergency Medical Services and Recruitment, Assistant Chief Occupational Health and Safety, uh, Lieutenant Recruitment and Outreach, and he's also been a firefighter. So as Deputy Chief of Operations for Langley City Fire Rescue, Brian's responsibilities include oversight of the department's frontline firefighters, administration, and personnel career uh, development. So uh, welcome uh, Chief uh, Brian Godlinton, and we'll uh, switch presenting over to you. Okay, thanks Lisa. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, well, um, thank you all for uh, joining us here today. Um, a little history of the, the fire prevention side of the house is um, when I came to Langley here, I did a 10-year um, analysis look back on the, uh, the whole fire prevention uh, premise inspections, and uh, it was quickly, I quickly identified there was some risk here, and really I was not aware of any intuitive or innovative app in order to uh, look at all this information. Uh, in an expedited format. Um, we were looking at our data through a number of different sources, uh, locations, uh, some through FDM, some through filing cabinets. So for business continuity, there were some real challenges. Um, so I reached out to um, Ingo and, and the, the Gingo team and Martin in particular, and we did over the last year really develop this app to what you're going to see today. And it really allows us to look at the quality of control of our inspections, um, our reinspections, the performance and deliverables of all of our staff, whether it's the frontline suppression firefighters or the prevention staff, uh, the time commitments we're, we're spending on the inspection side of the house and reinspections, and, and really the need and the support to move us towards a sound, objective, uh, risk-based inspection program, um, which also is going to, you know, prevent fires, um, support our businesses and economic loss in our city and overall making our city a safer community. So I'm gonna walk you through um, the app here. Um, there will probably be lots of questions um, and I welcome those at the end as Lisa mentioned, but this, uh, there's four sheets that are in this app application. The first one here is inspection trends. And you can see I've selected down at the bottom here, you can last 24 hours, 48, seven days. So you can pick the time frame. So I'm just gonna look at the last 365 days for today. Um, for this um, presentation, but I also think it's important to note that th we've um, we put a filter on the numbers, so these aren't the real numbers you would see in our community. Just uh, just thought I'd let you know, but they're close. But I just wanted to give you an idea of, of what this app could do for you. So uh, in the last 365 days, we're we have 2,163 inspections we're required to get done. We've completed, as you can see, 1,784. There's 480 inspections still due, um, 752 reinspections, uh, which is very concerning, which I'll speak to in more length here. And then we can drill right down to the unsatisfactory items, so that were identified through the inspections, um, premise inspections, and then what is um, what is still outstanding. And then at the very far right hand here, you can see the inspection rate. So this here is kind of the snapshot, high level view. You want a real quick look of what's going on in your city. You can do it. I can see from month over month what inspections were done. Um, and then at the bottom here, you can see if you want to scroll down through here, you would actually be able to see what um, what businesses and so forth. And over here, we can go right down into the gr granular detail of, you know, the fire prevention officer, A shift, B, C, and D. And we can drill right down even further to who actually signed off that inspection of that premise. Um, so this is um, the first slide, and then you go up here, and we're going to move to the second slide. And this one here is now looking at the inspection details. So again, here's all the premises uh, going from the, the, the years since last inspected. So 5.5 years, 4.7, and it drops right down. Uh, and then over to the right, it's showing us the total violations. Um, that were identified through the fire uh, inspections and then the outstanding violations. So when you want to talk about risk and you want to focus whether you got some additional staff on a particular day and you got some foot inspectors you want to send out, you can quickly go here, print off, you know, the top 10 or 15 risks and get them signed off uh, or get them re-inspected. 
Um, and simply you can either go over here and drill down into the business and you'll see accepting the filter, yes, and then the filter's up here. And we can go right down into this business and look at the last time it was inspected, uh, the number of inspections it required. This particular business, um, there was no violations noted. And its next inspection date was uh, July 24th. So again, this is a snapshot of data, so it's, it isn't um, totally up to today. Um, obviously, it's an older data set we're looking at. Um, and then simply just clear the filter off, and it goes back to the last 365. So again, you can select a business here, or you can over just go over here and hover. And um, so let's go to outstanding violations and portable extinguishers. So if we selected this, you're going to now see all the business will populate over here, starting from the top to the bottom of who had extinguishers that are out of date and so forth. Okay, we'll reset this filter and we'll move on to the next sheet. So again, we're still looking at the last 365 days, moving across property location. So here we can, um, we've taken the longitude and latitude of all the businesses within our city. So a prevention officer before they go out or the crew, they're not quite sure of the particular business and they want to get a uh, a location they can simply go in here uh, we've got you can go through here and pick whatever business you're going to go to or you can go up here to the smart search and here I was just looking at body craft it's a local body shop in our community so let's select that and it'll drill right down to our map so then we can just hover over top and full screen it, and here's the body shop. So this is where we're going to do our premise inspection today, for example, if you wanted to know exactly where you're going or what business this is. And then we can exit out of here. And now that I've selected the, um, the body shop, we can actually um, go back right into the detail here of, again, um, we select the body shop. We want to go into detail and see what they've done over the last little bit. You can see over the last, um, so I've gone back a slide now to the inspection details for this particular address. And you can see that we've inspected them uh, seven times over the last what, four or five years. And um, they're at an inspection rate of 57.1%. So obviously we've gone back here for a couple rechecks. Um, you can see in 2015, we're back a couple times. 16 over here, we're back a couple times. Um, and um, so, Obviously, when we talk about reinspections, that means there's no compliance and businesses aren't following up, which is an increased risk in our city. So when we went to build out this application, what was quickly identified was 42% um, um, of our businesses were requiring reinspections. And not only is that risk for fire, but that's economic risk for the community itself, for the tax base, ensuring that we keep the businesses up and running and uh, bringing the tax dollars into the city to support all of the, the needs and expenses that a city takes here. Um, so that was one of the risks. The other I think we identified through this application is 38% of all of our inspections we do annually are reinspections, which is concerning. So this was another need and rationale to develop this app so we can focus our time and energy where we're going to get the most bang for our buck for lack of better words, to make our community a lot safer and so forth. So um, we'll reset these filters. Um, and again, so that just, I just wanted to give an example how we can drill to a business and go through the whole um, gamut of slides or sheets here. And it'll go back to, you know, this body craft was last inspected 1.3, um, 15 months ago. And then the last sheet here that, um, we haven't looked at is risk. So here, um, one thing uh, about the risk slide is, if your city was going to build out this application, um, you have the ability to, to develop the overall aggregate risk within your community. So for us, we've taken um, the occupancy uh, type or the classification. We've taken the risk from the overdueness of its in last inspection. Uh, you added, we've added the outstanding code violations from previous inspections. And then we took, in this last piece here, we've taken their reinspection rate and we've built an overall aggregate score for the businesses. And then it's heat mapped here. 
so then you can drill right down into an area of the city and you can see by color here there's some greater risk and this is where we need to focus our energies on so that some of these businesses for example uh, might not be the safest types of businesses um, and um, based on what they're selling or what they're storing or or so forth but then maybe they require inspection every six months where i'll use a starbucks for example which is very low risk uh, nobody's occupied in the building after hours it's a lot less risk maybe that should be inspected every three years so you'll be able to take this application uh, build an overall aggregate risk which would support you um, through an objective lens to move to a risk-based inspection program I don't think there's um, I think I'll pass it back to Lisa and that uh, and answer any questions at the end if, uh, if there's any questions Thank you, Deputy Chief Godlinton, for discussing and demonstrating the fire prevention and risk assessment dashboard. Um, I think we can certainly see the value of risk-based inspections. We have another question, which is on the presentation from Chief Godlinton. What is the requirement for inspections versus inspectable properties? Do they have a frequency of inspections they need to meet? So Brian, if we can have you answer that question. Okay. Um, yeah. So the the inspections, the inspections, and the inspectable properties. Um, so we have we have 2,132 inspectable properties in our city, and that can fluctuate depending on how many new businesses are opening or closing. And then based on the the occupancy type and so forth, we'll determine the number of inspections that we're required to hit annually for our targets. Um, we currently um, have one fire prevention officer that's out there. Uh, all day long, five days a week. Then we have our fire suppression crews uh, that are assigned anywhere from 25 to 40 inspections per shift. Uh, the And there there's an expectation that they finish them when they're done, they're done, and then we assign them two months at a time. So they're getting anywhere from, say, 50 to 90 uh, for a two-month block. And then we're continually monitoring the progress um, we had another question, do the reinspections count as an inspection? They do. Um, so we'll evaluate if one particular shift's getting heavy on the reinspections, we may be a little uh, light on their next assignment so they can get caught up because reinspections are just as important as the inspection to make sure that people are following through with the requirements. So we do set targets for all of our staff. Um, and the reinspections we have, we came up with like a super six. Um, after talking to some other best practicing neighbors, i.e. Surrey next door here, um, that if it's, say, um, an exit light or extinguishers or like a low risk um, violation that's been identified, we have the customer sign off um, on an agreement that they, within a two-week period or a defined period of time, that they will actually um, get the violation rectified they'll sign off and own the responsibilities and they'll fax that back to us or drop it off in person, which would alleviate the need for a follow-up. Now, some follow-up inspections based on the severity of the nature. Um, we might be there later that day or the following day or two days later, give them time to get it done. But depending on what we're seeing, we'll determine what's going to trigger the, the reinspection time to come back. Okay, hey, thank you, Brian. Another question, are either of the fire departments uh, participating in plans, examination, and building code inspections in addition to fire code inspections? If yes, are these being tracked as well? I'll pass that to Brian, if he doesn't mind. Uh, sorry, can you say that question again, um, Lisa? Sure. Um, are any of the fire departments present, uh, I guess, participating in plans examination and building code inspections in addition to fire code inspections? Uh, yeah, we are doing the plan review and so forth here. Um, again, as Marty said, we're collecting all of our data, whether it's public education or premise inspections, it's all being collected. Um, but as it relates to the, bu the building code, no, we, um, we have a task force team that we have a seat on with, uh, with all the other departments in the city to address those issues. But for fire here alone, no, it's, it's focused on the premise inspections. Okay, great. Thanks, Brian. Lisa, can I jump in for a sec? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I just wanted, to, I thought it'd be important to, um, to emphasize that not only this um, application that we built um, is really about quality control of our inspections, reinspections, and making our city safer, but um, you know, this has been 12 months 
in progress to get done. And just alone, one of the huge takeaways was not just the um, the streamline of everything, the efficiencies. We've created so many administrative efficiencies for our, our, our admin side of the business by this, um, because the back end, for example, all the reinspections and the billings and uh, the billings for reinspections. To give you an example, we in the last five years we lost a potential of $147,000 in lost revenue for not following through with administrating the fees uh, associated to reinspections and so forth, which we're doing now. So there's huge opportunities across the organization where we created efficiencies, but but most importantly, uh, one of the biggest outcomes of this app in the last 12 months is we got three additional firefighters uh, to staff up a daytime crew, which is going to be focused on premise inspections, just based on the risks that we identified what we had within the city that we needed the resources to um, to ensure that we were uh, delivering on what we the expectations on the premise inspections because we weren't where we needed to be. So the app doesn't just create efficiencies on the day to day, but it also supported us in uh, three new positions for staffing as well, which I think was critical. Thank, Thank you. you, Brian.